Hello again. As you can see, I finally have a finished leg. Finished in the sense that all the main components are, are included here, the drives, the foot shells, the battery boxes, uh, the wiring uh, up into the leg. Um, everything is bolted together and fastened uh, as it would in the final droid. The only thing really left to do is to attach them, attach it to the body, which I'm still working on the shoulder hubs before I do that. Uh, I thought today what I would do is kind of give you a, an overview of how the leg assembly comes together, how all the different parts fit together, um, a couple of little gotchas, a couple of modifications that I made along the way. Um, but let's take a closer look around and show you some of the main features. So starting from the top, you have the horseshoes. These are magnetic. You can swap them out if you want to. The blue part's the booster cover. I think. The silver is the booster itself. Then you have this silver ankle bracelet, and that helps hide the seam between the leg, which is everything white above this, and the ankle down below. Then you've got the foot shell. The side panel is magnetically attached. It is used to conceal some of the screws that hold the foot shell to the drive unit. You've got the battery cables that attached to the battery box. These are also magnetically connected. Coming around the back, you see a lot of the greebles on the ankle. And if you look down in here, you can see some other components on the inside of the ankle. Uh, there's a, you can see the two wires from the motor that uh, come up out of the drive unit and go up into the ankle. And then there's also a flexible piece in there, it's the ankle lock, and that provides uh, some cushion um, between the leg and the foot drive, and it also helps keep it at the correct angle. And that's about it. Leg doesn't look quite as pretty from the back, but you're not going to be able to see that. Overall, I'm, I'm pleased with the, uh, with the paint job. It's been together for a while. I've got a few scratches there, but uh, I know I'm eventually going to touch some of this up and possibly weather R2 at some point in the future. So you'll notice down here that not everything is completely sealed. Uh, you can see there the boundary between the foot shell and the drive unit itself. And I've got some other paint chips that have happened over the months since this has been together. As is often the case, this the bit of a gap between this part of the, uh, of the drive unit and the foot shell, but that's really almost unavoidable. One thing that I wish I had noticed uh, when I was painting was to paint the top of the ankle silver. I think, I think silver would be best. As you can see, a little bit of the bare plastic where the booster cover sits down in that little recess there. I might fix that on the second leg. I don't know that I'm going to bother painting it here. The foot cylinders were the bane of my existence. I hated those things. Getting something that would be round and not show the layer lines took a lot of sanding and a lot of painting. Ultimately, I'm pleased enough with the way they turned out and glad I don't have to do any more. So that's kind of the overview of the leg, but let's put it on its side and show you a little bit more about what's inside. So we start up here with the horseshoes. And if anyone who's ever embarked on a droid building experience knows that there is no correct way to build an R2. Not only were there variations from film to film, but oftentimes scene to scene, little details on R2 would be different. One of the most prominent being the two button details here on the horseshoes. In about half the films, there are buttons forward, and in the other half, there are buttons rear. So I'm partial to the buttons forward, which is how I have my droid set up, or I intend to have them set up. But the cool thing with the badly design is that these horseshoes are attached magnetically. So it's really easy if you have the polarity of your magnets consistent that you can just pop on the other horseshoe and you can have buttons rear if you'd like.
So inside here, you can see where the bolts will be used to attach uh, the leg to the shoulder. I have yet to screw this center hub in place. I just need some small M3 self-tapper screws. And I'm also thinking about uh, putting a couple of magnets in here so I can keep an Allen key that's the correct size for these uh, bolts. That way, if I need to take the legs off for transport, I can, I know I'll always have the tool handy. So the other magnetic part of the leg is the booster cover. And this comes right off. And in here, well, first of all, one of the things that I noticed is I left my legs assembled for a while with the blue booster covers in place. And they kind of left a little bit of paint behind in a few spots. It's not that big a deal since the cover itself hides that. But uh, if you are in the process of building and you have the time, I would say let your paint cure for as long as possible before you store the pieces together. So this booster itself is, is epoxied into place. But you can see though that I have painted the bottom here and even part of the side. That's a sloppy job, but just painted part of that blue. You're really not going to be able to see it too much, but if you do put this on, and if you were to look down in here, the shadow on the camera is really kind of hiding it, but you can see some of the detail in there. So just a little bit of, of paint to block that out is kind of a nice thing to include. So coming around to the other side, you can see where the wires for the motor feed from the ankle into this cavity of the leg. The wires that came with my motor actually were really not quite long enough. I only had about an inch or so of wire protruding out here before I had, uh, before they, they terminated. They, uh, by default, they came with some spade connectors. But what I ended up doing was I got some bullet style connectors. Um, these are actually really nice and, and low profile. Uh, so they're able to fit through the uh, ankle. I'll show you that a little bit later when uh, I take everything apart. But um, this actually worked out pretty well. And I probably made these a little bit too long because now they come almost, almost the full length of the leg. But I'm okay with that. Gives me plenty of, uh, of slack to play with. So uh, for now, let me go ahead and take this apart and walk you through the process of assembling it. All right, so with the leg broken down into its main components, we've got the leg on the left there, the foot shell, drive unit, battery box, and the decorative pieces. In addition, we have the flexible ankle lock on the right there some hardware for attaching the battery box and the foot shells. And then we have the M12 bolt that I'm using for my axle. And I'll have a little bit to tell you about that too, because that does vary, that does stray from the Baddeley designs. The other thing that I will show briefly here is where I extended my motor cables. So you see that uh, I did uh, cut them here, splice in some longer wires to these uh, small bullet style connectors. And these will feed easily through this hole here coming up out the top. I actually do need to put them through one at a time, however, which is why the two wires are still kept separate. But let me show you a little bit about what I did differently with my axle. So in the battery design, the foot drive is actually attached to the ankle uh, with a 3D printed axle that spans this area here. Um, like a lot of builders, I'm not thrilled with the idea of relying on a 3D printed plastic part for such a critical junction. So what I and many other builders have done is decided to seek out a hardware solution. This turned out to be a little bit trickier than I thought. Um, first of all, there is a spot on this side of the shell, I'm sorry, foot drive, that will hold an M12 nut. M12 is the size hardware that's going to work in this situation. 
But if you do shop for a nut, make sure that you get a thin nut and not a thick nut. So a standard thick nut on the left simply sticks out too far. They do make a thin nut, which is exactly the right size for this application. So I did have to file a little bit in order to get that to fit in there, but eventually I was able to compress that in and that's a really good snug fit. So first tip, if you're using M12 hardware, get yourself a thin nut. As for the bolt itself, that was another exercise in multiple trips to hardware stores. So first, I went ahead and just picked up an M12 bolt. 80 millimeters is the right length to tighten that up and fit nice and flush in there. But right away, I was not thrilled with the idea of my 3D printed ankle resting on those sharp threads. So I decided what I really needed was a longer bolt that was partially threaded that I could cut down to the correct length. So it turns out that if you find M12 threaded nuts that are about 100 millimeters long, the unthreaded portion takes you where you need to, which is about 65 or so millimeters. And when I cut that one down to the correct length to make it about 80 millimeters, I thought, okay, well, this is perfect. And if I thread that one through, you'll see that the threaded or the unthreaded part doesn't quite make it all the way across, but it is wider than the threaded part. So I'm really not concerned with that. I could maybe have gone with 110 millimeter, uh, but I'd worry then that the unthreaded part might interfere with the nut. So 100 millimeter partially threaded M12 bolt is what I needed for that case. And I had to cut it down. But then I came across the next problem, and that was once I put the foot shell on, I really couldn't tighten that. Uh, the hex head just wasn't going to work. So the key there is to get a socket cap M12 by 100 millimeter bolt. Unfortunately, this learning process cost me a few bucks because each of these bolts runs about 350, and I ended up with a few fails along the way. All right, so now that we've figured out what hardware we're going to be using for the ankle junction, uh, we can start assembling. So the first thing that you need to do is attach your foot shell to the drive unit. So let me go ahead and do that now. So the foot shells are held on with a total of four screws, two on this side and then two on this side. I'm using 14 millimeter screws for this and I found that there's a little bit of coaxing that needs to be done in order to make sure that these holes are all properly aligned. All right, so now that the foot shell is firmly attached to the drive, uh, the next step is to attach the leg and finish the ankle. So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna take the ankle lock piece. It has a thin tab and a thick tab. The thin tab is the one that's gonna drop into the foot drive and the thick one is the one that's going to point upward and lock into the ankle. So all we really do is drop that piece in place. So we'll grab the leg and you'll see there are two holes. There's the smaller one, which is for the motor wires and the larger one is what the ankle lock is going to click into. So we will feed our motor wires through that and up into the leg. And then we just need to line this up and drop this on. So once that's in place, we grab our axle, and thread that through, 
and tighten it. And there's where the hex head bolts just weren't going to work. It's really tight uh, to be able to get that on um, and to be able to tighten it. It kind of doesn't quite fit around there. This will just make it a whole lot easier to tighten it. So with, that's, with that done, the leg is pretty much ready for the finishing touches. All right, so before we put the magnetic parts on, we still need to attach the battery box. And a shout out to Tom over at Tom's Projects. Uh, I did uh, router out my little half circle. Uh, this was something that was not included in the uh, version of the battery files when I downloaded them, who knows how long ago. Uh, it's since been fixed, but because this uh, ankle bolt sticks out a little bit uh, you need this uh, this little notch in your battery box in order to clear that when you go to put that on so you should be able to just pop that on and this is another case where I certainly understand why people search for magnetic solutions for attaching the battery boxes because probably the most inconvenient part about all this is that in order to attach the battery box, you need to get screws into these holes underneath here. So uh, this is the last part of the assembly, but clearly one of the most inconvenient. So obviously if you're taking your droid apart for disassembly, uh, he's going to need to be laying down in order for you to get access to all of this. So now that that's there, we can take our battery cables, assemble those. We can slap on our half moon. Tuck and with the last couple of pieces snapped into place, everything is back together. So it's actually kind of nice now that this is together, it's a lot less pieces laying around the workshop. Uh, I do still have a good bit of parts over here. I do need to get around to painting some blue, finishing up the ankle. Most of the detail pieces are ready. And then I've also got these other pieces that have been sitting around for way too long. But once these are, once this, the two legs are done, I will work on finishing up the shoulder hubs and then R2 can be standing on his own three legs. I hope you found this helpful and I'll talk to you all soon.